Hello, I'm Peter Rigby, and welcome to Capital Markets Update. Today is Monday, July 23rd, 2012. Today we're asking the question, how are Brazil's banks doing in the capital markets, especially given that Europe and Brazil are such close trading partners? The 2008 financial crisis dramatically showed how interconnected the world's banking institutions are. Now, of course, Europe is mulling over plans to recapitalize some of the European banks, especially in Spain. So it's a good question. As with other emerging markets, Brazil's economy slowed during the first few months of this year. That caused loan growth for the Brazilian banks to slow to 2% in the first quarter, the lowest rate since early 2009. Asset quality ratios are worsening, but bank profits remain adequate. And we do not expect non-performing loans to increase much as economic conditions improve in the second half of 2012. We also expect that the bank's loan portfolios to increase by 17 to 21%. And we expect no major changes to banks' credit standings in 2012. The bond market seems to be agreeing with our assessment of these Brazilian banks. Let's take a look. Bond yields on 2015 maturities for these four triple B rated Brazilian banks range from 2.5% to 4%. That compares pretty favorably to our triple B bank benchmark yield today of 3.2%. Three of the banks, Banco do Dorneste, Banco do Brasil, and Banco Bradesco are pricing at or tighter than the triple B benchmark. Not only this, yields for these three have actually narrowed over the last year. By comparison, our benchmark actually widened by a tenth of a percent, and many banks globally have seen their yields widen. Banco Santander Brazil is the exception amongst these four banks. Its 2015 bond yields are at 4%, just up slightly from 3.8% a year ago. Banco Santander Brazil's higher bond yields should surprise nobody. Its parent is the Spanish bank Banco Santander, and its 2015 bond now yields 5.6%, almost 2% more than its Brazilian subsidiary. All four banks have triple B ratings with stable outlooks, but for slightly different reasons. Banco do Brazil and Banco Bradesco have standalone credit profiles with triple B+. But our triple B rating on the Brazilian sovereign caps those ratings because of the harsh stress of a sovereign default and the fact that these banks and other Brazilian banks largely invest in Brazilian bonds. Our triple B rating on Banco do Dorneste comes from its triple B standalone credit profile. We have concluded that the bank is a government related entity. Therefore, its rating will reflect changes to the Brazilian foreign currency rating. Banco Santander's rating reflects its core subsidiary status of single A minus of its single A minus Spanish parent but we cap the subsidiaries ratings at the Brazilian sovereign and expect that the bank's rating would move with the sovereign, up or down. Bond spreads against the asset swap curve for three of these banks have outperformed our triple B benchmark for financial institutions. Let's take a look. About a year ago, Banco Bradesco, Banco do Brasil, and Banco do Dorneste all priced close to our triple B financial institutions benchmark. All three now price inside the 311 basis point spread for the triple B curve. Banco Bradesco prices the tightest at about 211 basis points. Banco Brazil trades only 18 basis points wider at 229. And Banco do Dorneste trades just inside the benchmark at 289 basis points. It's actually widened out about for the year by about 40 basis points. Banco Santander Brazil prices about 130 basis points wider than the triple B benchmark at 447 basis points. That's actually closer to our double B plus benchmark of 411 basis points. Well, there you have it. Bond spreads and yields for these four banks, these four Brazilian banks, appear to be holding up against the pressures that have caused many global bank bond spreads to widen. Loan growth did slow at the beginning of the year, but we do not expect the rate of non-performing loans to increase as the economy improves in the latter part of the year. Our stable triple B sovereign rating caps the ratings on these banks, and so we expect no major changes to banks' credit standings in 2012. Thanks for listening in, and join us next time for a Capital Markets Update.